Hey everybody, hobby update time. So Friday I finally got my Cromlick order. Went really fast once it shipped. So again, I'm just gonna assume the delay was caused by the, the, the sale they had at 20% off. 20% off is hard to pass up. Cause when Cromlick has any sort of a sale, I'm on top of it, even if I don't have the money. So one thing I did pick up was I picked up custom force fields, uh, three of them, uh, for me and for my uh, blue skinned orc army. So this is the this is a custom force field. This is what you get. So this is the backpack part. So you got a rope, a skull, and a, like a lever at the bottom. It's like plasma generator or whatever. Fortunately, the mold line goes right through that. So you have to clean up those mine. It's a little hard to clean that up. And notice here we got like these circles right here. So this is made for a specific Cromlick model. And that makes it a little difficult to put difficult to put on uh, a regular knob body. And we got the three bits here. So I can't really tell if so it's supposed to be covered in leather or something, or because they're not straight circles, concentric circles like the normal GW KFF is, but anyway. So that's what you get four bits and they, they are kind of labeled so like there's a little links to this hole there's a little triangle on this side little x on this side and then on the bottom of two of these is the x and the triangle so pretty straightforward on how to put it together so i have built the two force field mechs for the blue skin or or golf orc army so i'm going to show those and how the pack pack works on a knob body so this is the first one here And this is the proportions of the backpack of the KFF assembled to a knob body, and it is absolutely perfect. Even though it's made for a specific Cromlick model, um, and it would fit on that They're much better. It fits pretty well on this. I do have to, you do have to do some trimming at the top here, like right here is that at an angle. So if you want it to fit smoothly on a on a on a GW model, you kind of have to like trim the top down a little bit, so it's more level. Um, so what I did was I used the two shoulder pads and I used another shoulder pad in the middle between them to get a completely smooth piece of metal at the top. And it gave me a lot more gluing surface. Um, down here where it glues to the back, unfortunately there's not a lot of gluing surface, so you have to be careful with that. Um, but yeah, so this is the first of the force field models I built. See, lots of watch parts. I haven't done a video on watch parts in a long time, but I'll see if I can dig that up. Or might I make a new one in actual HD, but so you, for a few dollars you can get a few grams of just random watch parts and they work really well for orc models. Just gears, these little tiny gears work perfect when you're building mechs or anything mechanical. So there's the first force field mech. I got the wire coming out of the control handle into his arm and then into the force field. Because there's just like this tube or hose on the side here that goes nowhere. Again, it's made for the Cromlick model. So I decided to just drill it out and use it as a, as a basis for the wire. This is the other one they built. Again, much more watch gears. Screws and gears coming out of the armor plates. Get right there on the tabard. Watch part there on the side of the gun. And this one goes, the wire from the force field goes straight into the top of his head. Why not? more watch parts there on the chopper. So yeah, I mean these backpacks are absolutely perfect proportion for these orc knob models. Um, surprisingly perfect. And I mean they look great, they fit in, and um, yeah, so no complaints about these uh, force field models. Force field backpack. So again, this one's for me in case I need a second, third force field mech on foot. So, plus I still have the plastic force field from the Mega Knobs get left over too, so that gives me more options. So what else did I pick up? I also picked up another set of exhaust exhaust, exhaust pipes, if I could talk, to go along with the Fox Box one. So eventually I'll get around to finishing up the exhaust on the um, Warcopter. Again, I've just been building so much stuff from this army, I haven't, for the Blue Skin Golf Army, I've done anything for, with that yet. So yeah, we got, these are really, really nice. Get that, that sprue and you get the sprue. So 
I'll figure out exactly what I want the um, Warcopter exhaust to look like here. Bet between these and all the bits I got from Foxbox, I should be able to come up with something pretty, pretty much like I want. Um, so what else did I pick up? I got... Uh, let's see... Yeah, the Orkenberg signs. So, yeah, that's what they call them. This is a package with a bunch of different, like, randomly shaped panels. And some uh, diamond plate, some plus plate, some just some random bits, a couple orc symbols. These are things to go, meant to go onto the side of terrain and stuff on walls, just to add some variety and give some different looks to things. I mean, they're not very. It's not very expensive, but when it was twenty percent off, it was even more, more or less expensive, more affordable, more value. I should say that's the word I'm looking for. It's good value. And the other two things I bought for the my big train piece, which since I got the uh, goths going, I haven't done, haven't touched yet. First, I got some posters, some safety and warning posters. So there is moving parts, toxic waste, tool storage. Just some hazard icons. Just some things to kind of dress up that piece of terrain. Again, really good value at 20% off. And then I picked up a big kit of Imperial Barricades. A large set. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what comes in there. So all that stuff is what comes in this. And again, this is going to be for that terrain piece. going to add some walls and barricades to the outside of it. So I haven't opened it yet because it's just going to be sitting around for a while until I get around to doing the train piece. So I picked this up. Again, it was silly cheap considering the, uh, the, the, the discount that was going on. And lastly, I was looking for something else to buy just because I wanted, didn't want to seem like the, I was spending so much on shipping for not a whole lot of stuff. So I picked up one of, the, one of their Smasher Guns. And it was only like 30 bucks. So it was only like 23 on sale and for that price it's like why the heck not i probably should have picked up more than one but i, I, think, I don't really think i don't really need all that many so here we have the base chassis i don't feel like putting it together right now so i'm going to do a full review of it here's the gun barrel that's how i'm going to go right there Uh, some more chassis bits. That's a really cool orky head there. Uh, more chassis more fenders. Uh, these things are just so de so detailed. It's so awesome. I mean, look at I mean, look at all the cables and stuff on the top of that. Just looks fantastic. All those little fine wires there over the grating in the back. Let's see what else we got here. Another piece of armor. Miscellaneous bits. Looks like we got an exhaust pipe. And the some spheres there. Could be more like a tractor cannon, but the gunner. <laughs> He's adorable. Absolutely adorable. Oh, those are his hands right there. That other sprue. And lastly, the tracks. It rides on. So yeah, I mean, these are 30 bucks each, like this, normal price, plus shipping, of course. And even all that, that is still, even at 15% off, that's still way cheaper <laughs> than the GW kit. So if you don't want to do your own scratch building, um, I would recommend trying to get these Cromlet kits. They're shipping with FedEx. It's a little more expensive. I paid like $15 for shipping, but it only took, from Poland, it only took, what, five days? So that's <laughs> that's pretty good, pretty efficient shipping, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with these. I don't know what I'm gonna do exactly do with this, because of course it doesn't fit with the aesthetic of my other mech guns, but I just bought it to just like review and take a look at it. I doubt it's gonna go with the soft army. Because I'm trying to keep it off army all GW stuff, so it's more 
universal um, as far as being able to sell it. That's why I'm not oops, too worried about um, that's why I'm not trying to get anything too scratch built or 3D printed in that army because I want to be able to have someone buy it and take it to a GW workshop, GW store and play without having any issues whatsoever. A few resin heads, these backpacks, and a couple of 3D printed boss pole toppers isn't going to be enough to cause any problems, I don't think. But anyway, yeah, so if you want to build some KFF mechs, and we don't know what's going to happen in the new edition, but for now, these backpacks are of great value, and they just look fantastic. And then I also did build the uh, War Banner knob for that army, too. Just using the, uh, just using uh, some big chopper bits, this face here from the War Biker sprue, and then the 3D printed top, and then the, put two of the guns from the boy sprue together for their for his custom shooter. Yeah, so there's a War Banner knob and the two force field mix for the Goth Arc army. But yeah, so really happy with this Cromlick purchase. Um, I said I don't know what I'm gonna do with that mech gun. <laughs> I'm gonna put it together and do a, a review of it once it's all assembled. Don't know when that's gonna be. Um, I got plenty of exhaust bits now to do the work, finish up the workopter, and I got all the stuff to do the uh, big train piece. Um, but unfortunately, I have to go back to work next week, so I'm running out of time. I've been spending all my time just working on these golf orcs, and um, I haven't had time to do anything else hobby wise. So, yeah, that's it for this Monday's update. Any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.